Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, this is a new week, and listening to me, have great expectations today. Praise God. This week is going to bring you good things. You know why? Because God has sent His word. Praise God. Now remember, every broadcast, we are going to make this demand for our daily bread. So are you ready to do that now? Let's go. Say after me, say, Father, today I demand and I receive my daily bread. I receive it now in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Listen, it's important you ask. You know, sometimes people think we pray such prayers because we don't have money or sometimes oh, because we are in need. No, sir. You see, if your blessing is not being the answer to prayers or being the answer to what God has said, you will eventually lose it because it's not everything people have that God gave to them. You understand that? Nah. See, that's why the Bible qualified it. It said every good and every perfect gift. Meaning there are gifts that are not good. There are gifts that are not perfect. But if it's going to be good and perfect, then it comes from God. And then if it comes from God, you as a child of God, what do you do? He gives you the wind to ask from the Lord. Praise God. So it doesn't matter. You may even have so much money. Hey, still ask still ask why are you asking so you'll be sure that god is responding to your asking you understand what i'm saying you may be you may have a good job you know sometimes people think oh it's because you know lots of people just don't understand the gospel of our lord jesus christ they don't that's why i told you the other last week i said jesus preached and said repent and believe the gospel yeah it's the truth Repent and believe the gospel. Praise God. So that's why we make this demand. We are doing it as an act of faith. So it's not about, oh, it's for people who don't have anything. It's for people who are trusting God for a miracle. It's for people who are, no, it's for everyone. As we make this declaration, open your mouth and make it too. Don't just say, mm -hmm. no, open your mouth and make the declarations, praise God. And I've been receiving several testimonies already, praise God. Suddenly, things are turning around for lots of people. And then, listen, now, the Lord instructed me again, you know, beginning from today. You know, we're going to start praying for 45 minutes from noon, our own time here in West Africa. For, for every day, every Monday to Friday, at noon, we're going to be having a prayer meeting. And guess what the Lord said to me? He said, I want you to begin, I want you to start releasing the grace, this grace, praise God. What grace is that? The grace, you know, to meet your needs, the grace, you know, having God to really manifest himself as your father. I'm telling you the truth. Now, he's your father and he wants to meet your needs. And hear what the Lord says. He says, I'm going to be making my children a wonder on the earth. So connect with us by noon. We're going to start today. Praise God. And, and I'll let you know um, the, the link before noon so you can join us either by video or by audio. Praise God. So get ready, get excited with, with that. That's the announcement I have for you right now. So that's going to continue until the Lord commands us to stop or do something else in that regard around that time. But this is going to be our way for now. So join us, invite someone who, um, who you need to be in that meeting and, and you will surely be blessed. Praise God. Let's go into today's teachings. Father, we bless you today. Your word is sure. And that is what we hold there in our hearts. Thank you for the ministry of your spirit that communicates your truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I know today burdens shall be lifted yokes shall be destroyed in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you father amen praise god turn your bibles with me to ephesians chapter one now we've been talking about the 
purpose, the hope, and the manifestation of God's calling. And we've talked about the, the purpose and we began to look into the hope. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning from verse 15. It says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love, unto all saints cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayer now look at the content of his prayer verse 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him i want you to take note of that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him say it is god that gives and then look at what he says next he says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you that ye may know what is the hope of his calling he says that you may know what is the hope of his calling you see, you may not know it. That's why Paul is saying, I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, you will begin to know what is the hope of God's calling in your life. There is a reason God has called you to be a believer. And you must know and have hope where that calling is concerned. Let me show you something else. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. I love this. Verse 13. Romans 15, verse 13. It says, Now the God of hope. Halabashaya. He, you know what he called him? The God of hope. <laughs> He's God. He said, The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Hallelujah. Did you see that? The God of hope. He's the God of hope. He said, Is a prayer. He said, let the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. While you are believing, he says, let the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing. Watch that. That you may abound in hope through the power of of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Whoa. Kalabaya. Mm. It says that you may abound in hope. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can empower us to hope. Now that's why the Bible spoke about Abraham. It says, who against hope believed in hope. Think about it. Now, who made Abraham to hope? God made Abraham to hope. See, God made it. Because Abraham, I'm sure Abraham had gotten to that point. He was just loving his wife and they have discussed it and just told and said, look, man, even if we don't have any seed, even if we don't have any child, we still love one another. God is good to us. He's blessed us. He's made us rich. You understand? He's given us all these children all around us. Abraham raised the Bible says he raised 400 soldiers in his house. Now, that's not all the servants he had at, in his house. He's talking about at, among all his servants, he raised 400 army from his servants. Think about it. So it's so easy to just assume all these possibly adopted children, you know, servants, you know, eventually, all Abraham's servants, most of them gave birth to their children in his house. And he, he obviously adopted them. You understand what I mean by that? He became responsible for them. So they had all these things going on for them. And then suddenly God comes and says, Hey, Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. Suddenly, a new light came into his heart. Now he began to hope. Now, and then the Bible says, against hope, Abraham believed in hope. Why? Because that hope that Abraham had was powered by the Holy Ghost. He wasn't hoping in a man. He wasn't hoping in a system. His hope 
was from within, powered by the Holy Spirit. Listen, the reason sometimes you give up is because your hope is not powered by the Holy Spirit. Now here he says that you may abound in hope. See, now here he's talking about the hope of being a believer. So it's the same thing he was saying in Ephesians. He says that you may know the hope of your calling. In other words, you may know the hope for why you believed there is a hope and we we establish that that the first of all is to know the purpose what is the purpose the purpose is to give you life what life eternal life jesus said i am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance praise god so now he says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may understand or know what is the hope of your calling here he says that the god of hope fill you with joy and peace now why you are hoping for life i'm using this word hope because sometimes you know people want to say eh, we don't hope anymore we we have it now listen i'm talking about the fullness of life i'm not just talking about the beginning of life i'm talking about the fullness of eternal life that's what we're dealing with the fullness of eternal life so I'm not just talking about the joy of being saved right now. Now, oh, I have a new life. No, that's not what I'm talking about now. That's the beginning of our hope. But you see, there is also the fullness of our believing. There is fullness of life. What Jesus said, I am come that they might have life in abundance. So I'm talking about living the fullness of eternal life. That is what we still hope for. We still hope for it. Say, no, 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 well, I don't like that word hope. Hey, you better like it because it is part of the word of God. It's part of the character of God. He gives you hope first. That's why the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Where did your hope come from in the first place? If your hope didn't come from the Lord, then it's a hope that will be made ashamed. But the Bible in Romans 5, 5 tells us hope does not make a shape. Why? Because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts. And that's why your hope doesn't go to shame. Because that hope came from the love of God. Notice, God opens your eyes to see the, the reason He is calling you in. That is what gave you hope. And now when your hope is now powered by the Holy Spirit, powered by the Holy Ghost, the more you fellowship with the Lord, the more it becomes clear to you. The more you fellowship with the Lord, everything may not be clear in one day. But let me tell you this, if you don't have or receive that hope in the first place, he said, do we receive hope? Yes, you receive hope. You receive hope. In fellowshipping with the Lord, the Lord begins to speak to you. By the things the Lord begins to speak to you, you begin to hope. You begin to hope. Maybe you were very poor. Maybe you were in a very terrible situation. And you began to pray and fellowship with the Lord. Then the Lord begins to speak to you. Then He begins to talk to you about the future. Now the moment the Lord begins to talk to you about that future, suddenly hope begins to rise in your heart. Before this time, you used to think, what is life? What is in life for me? But then God begins to talk to you and say, son, I'm going to make you great. I'm going to take you places. I'm going to... And then suddenly you begin to have hope. Like, wow, wow, wow. There is no reason to give up. You haven't seen the fullness yet. But you see, because of that word coming to you, hope has begun to come into your heart. Hear me now. If you don't receive that hope because see while god is talking to you you may be receiving it and then suddenly after a while you begin to say mm, what was even doing me i was just excited mm, i was just excited and i don't think these things will really work you didn't receive the hope but you must make a conscious you you receive hope consciously a conscious statement i receive this hope that is coming into my spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. We're going to go more into this tomorrow because our time is up. I love you so much. That's why I'm bringing God's words to you. Praise God. God bless you. I'll see you by noon today. Praise God. Or oh, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.